Good afternoon, ladies, and gentlemen, boys and girls. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Big Akar Ahmed and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be going ahead and taking a look at a scientific miracle in the Holy Quran. And this is going to be explaining nitrogen and why nitrogen is the essential of life. And how is going to go ahead and help us break down the scientific facts of this. It is going to be Vertasium himself. Vertasium is a humongous channel on YouTube. I've been watching his videos for almost maybe six or seven years now. I've learned so much from this individual. The way he produces his videos is amazing. It is very clean. It is very uh, ex explanatory. And I think this is a very, very good individual to go ahead and break down the scientific miracle of the Quran for us. Now, the Holy Quran, we will get into in just a second, but let's go ahead and just jump into um, this video by Fertasium, where we go ahead and see where nitrogen came from and uh, what its essentials are on Earth. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. By weight, most of our bodies are made up of oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen. But the fourth most common element is nitrogen. Nitrogen is part of the amino acids that form proteins. It's part of hemoglobin, the compound that carries oxygen in red blood cells, and it's a central component of DNA and RNA. Nitrogen is essential for all life on Earth. We get our nitrogen by eating plants, or animals which have eaten plants, and plants get their nitrogen from the soil. The problem is, if you farm the same soil year after year, you harvest the nitrogen out of it. And eventually, there isn't enough nitrogen for healthy plants to grow. They can't produce enough chlorophyll to photosynthesize, which stunts their growth. Their leaves turn yellow, and they are more susceptible to pests and disease. Crucially for farmers, nitrogen deficiency means smaller yields. The way to fix this is to add nitrogen back into the soil. Now, let's go ahead and pause this and just go ahead and reflect real quick. He said that nitrogen is the fourth most common uh, element on the periodic table that, that is inside of our body. Nitrogen comes from plants um, or animals that eat plants. It comes from the soil. It is uh, very important to our DNA and our, our red blood cells. Um, so basically without this, everything would die, everything would have no sense of living, okay? Now, he says that as the animals eat the plants and you keep growing food, the soil becomes deficient in nitrogen. The more deficient the soil becomes in nitrogen until it runs out, things start wilting away, things start dying, things cannot grow there, the soil is dead. It is dead soil because it has no nitrogen. So now he's saying, how do we go ahead and get nitrogen in the soil? Like, where does it come from? And how is that even possible? So let's go ahead and see where is nitrogen? How is it, you know, where does it come from? And essentially, how is it broken down? Nitrogen isn't rare, it's common. 78% of the air is nitrogen. But it's in a form that plants and animals can't use. Two atoms of nitrogen triple bonded together. This bond, is one of the strongest in nature. The way to measure the strength of a chemical bond is by the amount of energy that's required to break it. So to break apart two chlorine atoms, for example, would take two and a half electron volts. To break apart two carbons requires 3.8 EV. Two oxygens, 5.2 EV. But to break apart two atoms of nitrogen, requires 9.8 electron volts, a tremendous amount of energy. So what he's going ahead and explaining is, is molecules work like Legos, right? Sometimes you might have a Lego that is glued together and sometimes you have a Lego that's not glued together. Sometimes it's easy to pop it off. Sometimes it's very hard to pop it off. You need extensive amounts of pressure, right? This is how the world works. SubhanAllah, God Almighty has created a system to where different molecules are stronger than others and some take stronger amount of force to break apart and to go ahead and de uh, to go ahead and break down so that things around the world and the earth can actually sustain itself. Now, what does this even mean, right? If he's saying that 78% of all nitrogen is in our air and it is not available for us to actually consume because we need to actually eat it through plants or eat it through pla plant-based animals. We get it from the soil. How do we go ahead and collect all this nitrogen in the air? What force is strong enough to go ahead and break down the nitrogen in the air 
and split these atoms apart to go ahead and bring them down to us into our soil. And how do they end up in our soil? Let's go ahead and see how he explains this. There are two processes that do this naturally. Lightning releases so much energy, it breaks apart N2 into individual nitrogen atoms. They then quickly react to form nitrogen oxides. And these molecules stay in the atmosphere until they react with water droplets in clouds and fall to the ground in rain. So he says that the lightning in the sky is so powerful that it would basically strike, it would create a force so strong that it would tear all these nitrogen atoms in half, creating nitrogen oxide. This nitrogen oxide would then form into clouds, then allowing rain to fall into the ground, into the soil, which allows animals to go ahead and eat plants, us to grow plants, and us to go ahead and eat plants, and that's where we get our nitrogen consumption. So if there is no necessary lightning, then there would be no breakdown of nitrogen in the sky. There's a breakdown of nitrogen in the air and in the sky because of the lightning, and then it is rained down into our soil. Now, you guys might be asking, what does any of this have to do with the Quran, right? I want to go ahead and take a look at this verse right here in the Holy Quran. This is uh, Surah al rum This is the Surah of the Romans, the chapter of Romans. And it is verse uh, is chapter 30, verse 24, okay? And this is so, so, so beautiful, ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls. What does God Almighty say here? And one of his signs is that he shows you lightning, inspiring you with hope and fear. And he sends down rain from the sky, reviving the earth after its death. Surely in this are signs for people who understand. Subhanallah. After 1,500 years, modern-day scientists figure out how atoms and electrons and neutrons and all this stuff work. They understand that nitrogen it takes an immense amount of pressure to go ahead and break. They understand that lightning is one of the things that breaks down that nitrogen, correct? And then they explain to us that it is sent down, right, from the rain and the sky, which then allows plants and animals to eat it and revives the earth. Okay, this is actually so amazing and so miraculous. What Vertassium has explained in a 12 minute video and probably 12 years of schooling is something that literally was explained in one verse in the Holy Quran. But when someone's reading this 1500 years ago, has no sense of science, doesn't know, understand anything, there's no scientist, no one can test these things. To someone 100 years ago or even 200 years ago reading this, it would go completely over their head. But in today's day and age, when I read his signs that he shows you lightning, right, to inspire you with hope and fear, and then he sends down rain from the sky to revive the earth after death, is so correspondent to the way nitrogen is broken down into nitrogen oxide by the lightning in the sky and then rains down into our soil, which then provides nitrogen to our animals and us. This is actually insane. This is actually miraculous. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so amazing in his design. He is so amazing in his perfection that when he tells us just simple things like this, we as human beings reject it. We don't even understand it goes over our head. Something as simple as this can break down into something as complex as a 12 years, uh, a 12 year degree in science. It's actually insanity. Insanity. The final thing I want to go ahead and just read in the Holy Quran is this right here. It's in the same exact chapter, and it's something that I like to go ahead and tell every single person um, that tries to go ahead and challenge the Quran. It says in Surah Al Rum again, chapter 30, verse 58, we have certainly set forth every kind of lesson for people in this Quran. And no matter what sign you bring to them, O Prophet, the disbelievers will definitely say to the believers, You are only the people of falsehood. So, the disbelievers will go ahead and see this clear sign and they'll deny it, even though the science backs it, even though it's very clear that God's talking about lightning and how he sends down the rain in the sky reviving the earth after. And there's a reason he mentions the lightning. One of his signs is that he shows you lightning, right? And then continues on with the rain and the sky reviving the earth. And then it says, surely in this are a sign to people who understand. Understand. Who understands this? This is who understands this. Vertassium understands this. Someone who is a degree in science 
understands this. This is a sign, right? This is truly miraculous, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. And I just want everyone to know that when the Quran says we have certainly set forth every kind of lesson for people in this Quran, it doesn't mean that the Quran is a rule book that has every single lesson in it. No, the Quran is a guide to every single lesson from the time it was revealed until the day of judgment. This is why when people start arguing, especially within the sects like Sunni and Shia, and, and, and these guys are arguing as much as they do, like it's actually insane that they can read a verse that says, we have set forth every kind of lesson within this Quran. And then they just deny this and go into their hadiths and start arguing and bickering each other. If the Quran sets forth every kind of lesson, then your hadith should not take you astray. Your hadith should not allow you to innovate. You should always, always, always seek a lesson from the Holy Quran. Everything in the Holy Quran will start making everything in your life make sense. The one thing before I ever read this verse in the Holy Quran that, that stood out to me was... When I started reading the Holy Quran, within my first two, three chapters of just reading, the amount of things that became clear in my life, even though the Quran was not specifically talking about them, I'm like reading about Prophet Adam and reading about Moses and just reading about marriage and reading about what, you know, like, like what you're supposed to give your kids after you die. But like everything started making sense to me in my life, my job and, and, and what I needed to do next. And it's like... Things just started becoming so clear. I do not know how to explain it. It's like there was a wall or a fog in front of my face. And then just by reading these things that had no correlation to anything else in my life by, by subject matter, like everything started becoming clear. I started figuring things out. I started understanding things that I wouldn't have been able to understand before. And it's not because I was given education or like I was given the proper utilities to do so. It was just like something opened up in me something opened up in my eyes in my heart in my ears and it's truly miraculous ladies and gentlemen and this is one of those signs that i want to go ahead and share with you guys and i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you guys so much for coming in today assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and if you guys have any other you know signs or, or miracles in the holy quran that you would like to share go ahead and leave them down below assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh